Happy Friday and welcome in to the Graham Lick and Matt Klain podcast. Only a few more Fridays before our Friday episodes will be previews, breaking down every game under the sun. We cannot wait. Today we're talking about the Virginia Cavaliers and Tony Elliott, brand new head coach there in Charlottesville. And you know what? We have the pleasure today of speaking with someone who played for Tony Elliott. Oh, it's my co-host, Eric McLean. Hello, Mac. What was it like to play for Tony Elliott? Tell the people. That was amazing. What a segue. I didn't know where you were going. I was kind of looking around like, is, like wait, is who's there, joining us? Is there a guest? Is, is someone in your office who's there? <laughs> um, wow. That was great. Um, man, he, you know what? He was just, he, he's one of the best, to be honest, because he, he cares so much about you, about a, 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 as a person first, rather than just what can this person do for me on the football field? What can this guy do for me? Uh, you know, as a football player. And, and, you know, I think we all just really respected that. And it was a very drastic change once he became the offensive coordinator, just because Chad Morris was wide open, right? Crazy, crazy, great play caller, scientist, like mad scientist. Pounding and then Tony, holes, yeah, right? t- yeah. <laughs> and then Tony was just much more calculated, mm. engineer, like, okay, this is why this, you know, and, and kind of like that. So it was very different. Um, but obviously I had known him for four years before that as, as a, as a coach. And so, you know, it, it was, it was a big change and, you know, we did things a little bit differently. And, and I thought what was, you know, really just in, indicative of who he was as a play caller and, and things that he wanted to do really was that snapshot in 2014 where, you know, we were going back and forth between Deshaun yeah. Watson and Cole Stout and, you know, we were trying to do things that Cole couldn't do. And then coach left for Ch- Chad Morris left for, I believe, SMU. And then, you know, Tony was the, was the play caller in the Russell Athletic Bowl. And Deshaun obviously was out for the season, had an ACL after beating the Gamecocks with one leg. Got to throw that in there. Um, and we called plays like we had never called all year because mm-hmm. they were designed for Cole. And we went on to beat them 40 to 6. Uh, by the way, it should have been 40 to zero, but we had our 12th string in and they scored like with one minute left. Um, I mean, so we destroyed them. And I thought, man, this guy sees what he has and mm. he calls plays accordingly. And, and I think that's what's going to be fantastic in Virginia. I know we want to get to this interview, but I just want to say that real quick. He has some unbelievable pieces to play with, if you will. And I know he's not necessarily going to be calling the offense, but I'm, I'm sure he's going to have a heavy hand in the design of this thing. That's his bread and butter. That's why he got this job was because of the, the execution that he's able to do on the offensive side of the ball. So really excited to see what he is going to look like as a head coach in year one. But without further ado, let's hear from him and let's talk with Coach Tony Elliott uh, from Virginia. Here we go. Coach E, my brother, what is going on? I got to tell you, when, when we were kind of planning these things out, and uh, I came across Virginia. I was like, this is going to be awesome. I'm so <laughs> excited to talk to you today. How the heck are you doing? I'm doing well. Doing well. Just got done with a little bit of uh, family time. Had a chance to take the boys up to New York City. Uh, caught the uh, the Yankees game on Saturday night. That was Come a blast. On. Yeah, then we had a chance to go the week before to Boston and caught one in Fenway. So the Fenway Bowl, the Pinstripe Bowl, both affiliated with the ACC. They took really good care of me and my family. So uh, it's been fun. That is awesome. So look here, you, you know the talent is so good, KG. It's just kind of writing the script for us. The very next line I have is, I know baseball is life for the Elliott <laughs> boys. I had no idea that y'all did that. That's awesome. I, I, I see, I've seen AJ Ace getting after it. It seems like they're dominating right now, man. How's baseball going? Well, you know, they're, I, I keep reminding the wife, they got a little bit of an unfair advantage. They grow up in an athletic household, you know. That's they're, right. That's right. They're around competition since the day they were born. So we'll we'll see uh, if they're able to stay separated once they get a little bit older. But uh, well, they love baseball. Baseball was always my first love growing up. Uh, it's the first sport I, I fell in love with, uh, played it all the way through high school. And now that they're old enough, one of the things I said, if I have an opportunity each summer, I want to take them to a couple of the different ballparks uh, so awesome. they have a chance. Uh, they, man, it was so cool. They got got to meet Aaron Judge. I had no wow. idea wow. that was going to happen. We just happened to be down on the field for batting practice. Shout out John Mosley for uh, for hooking that up. But uh, And he just walked over. Actually, he, he slid Ace a ball, and then he walked over and, uh, and and spoke to him for like two minutes and took a wow. picture. And it was awesome. 
Wow. See, nothing can beat that. It's not about like the Christmas gifts. It's the experiences. And that is so cool. And I love Coach how you just slid in. Yeah, we, we just happen to be down there for batting practice. You know, we just stumbled in for batting <laughs> practice. Whatever. It happens. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a shout out my man, Yeah, John you have the connects. Yankees and uh, it, it works a lot with the pinstripe bowl, but uh, man, he went he went above and beyond to accommodate myself. And actually, it was pretty cool because Coach Elko and his family was there at the same oh, time wow. too. Oh, cool! We there talked with with Coach Elko a couple weeks ago, and um, excited to see what he does at Duke. Before we get into your team, you coached Mac, okay? So this is like a a, a funny situation here. Did you have any inclination, Coachy, that Eric McClain would be a TV superstar one day? Of course, that's Mr. Clemson. Oh, what are you talking about? My man. <laughs> you, always, you always knew. You, you, you could always tell by the way that he carried himself uh, that, that, he, that he was more than football. Uh, and you could see that, uh, that, that the way he maneuvered around campus and uh, the relationships that he was developing, that he was going to put himself in position to do something special. And uh, just happy for him and the way that he represents his family. And uh, had a chance to co- uh, coach his little cousin. Uh, shout right. out to Little Mac, uh, <laughs> Mini Mac, as we would call that's it. That's right. That's right. Uh, but no, you could tell uh, from from day one that uh, that he was going to do something uh, something special. I agree. Well, checks in the mail. Checks in the mail to both of you. <laughs> when I met Mac, which I met him day one too, I think we we could all agree. <laughs> Coach, okay. Speaking of that, more than football, I've heard you mm-hmm. say this phrase that you want to build the model college football yeah. program at Virginia. We know that Virginia is one of the best academic institutions in the country, um, so you have that part as well. But maybe explain your vision for that, the model college football program. Well, you know, I was fortunate to be a part of of, of a program that that kind of changed college football and uh, and what Coach Sweeney did at at Clemson. And you know, one of the things he always talked about is is being the model. I'm um, not necessarily saying the model program, but just individually, you know, being the model for people to look up to. And so, as I started, you know, contemplating the transition to becoming a head coach, I said, if I'm going to do something, you know, what do I want it to look like. And also seeing where college football is kind of heading with all these external influences, I said I wanted to set myself apart and do something where you could you could show and illustrate that man you can win at the highest level but you can also do it uh, while building uh, building young men in the process and and what better combination than you know winning championships at Virginia on the field and then also uh, the quality young men that are going to graduate from this institution and go on and do things that are even bigger and better than what me and Mac been able to do <laughs> that's right come on it's always about the future it's always about what's next coach what, what is this transition been like for you because I have to imagine there's just Certain things that, you know, we all kind of have an idea, okay, when I get to this point, this is what I'm going to have to do. And then you get there, it's like, man, I, I had no insight of all these different things. And, and, you know, you can't just be the offensive guy. You can't just be a coordinator or, or just even your room. It's everything. And what, what has that transition been like? You know, at first there was a lot of excitement because you hit the ground running and there's only a couple of things that you're really focusing on. You're trying to meet the team. You're trying to put your staff together. Uh, you're trying to articulate your vision, uh, recruiting, and then recruiting season is over. And it's like, wow, now I got to build the whole program. So all these promises uh, that I made, now I got to put the, uh, the meat and potatoes to it. But uh, matter of fact, I just got done with a meeting and we're talking about playing manifests and who's going to be traveling uh, squad list, the 110, wow. uh, hotel rooms, uh, buses, hats for the bus drivers. I mean, you're talking about every, uh, every detail of your program. So, so that's what I, that, that's what I was explaining. Cause I had somebody ask me the question, you know, was I going to call plays anymore? Uh, and actually I was doing a forum for the NCAA in Phoenix. And one of the younger coaches asked me, was I going to call plays or, or what made me made that decision? And I said, watching coach Sweeney and then, you know, understanding the transition from position coach to coordinator and now absorbing the responsibility of managing uh, the entire staff plus the players uh, right. knew that there's there's this is a total I mean this is a total job I mean it's not just one aspect you have to be proficient in all the different areas and so for me I knew that I wouldn't be able to 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 do justice to the other areas of the program that are critical to success if I just focused on the offensive side of the ball trying to call the plays so yeah. hmm. that's really interesting I know when at Clemson you most of the time you would call the plays from the box too so you weren't really on the field, and that you got to be on the field this time. I mean, that's it's a whole different thing. <laughs> I got to learn how to watch the game again. I'm gonna have to balance timeouts and clock management, yeah. and you know, decide on when to punt and go right. with a little couple of tricks in the, in my bag. I got to do all that kind of stuff. All those things that you'd be looking at, Coach Shreen, like, man, why why are you even worried? About that? Now it's like those are big deals. Yeah. 
<laughs> right. That's why they huge, pay you the big huge. bucks, coach. That's why. That's right. Okay, speaking of your offense, let's talk about Brennan Armstrong because this guy yeah. is flat out special. Okay. I mean, I was mm-hmm. reading up, reading kind of the Virginia recap, and you look at the explosive plays last year, you look at the passing offense, passing more than almost any other team in college football, which is, we'll, we'll get more to that. But let's just start with Brennan. When you were looking at this job, I have to imagine knowing he'd be your QB, there was an appeal there. What what have you seen from him so far? You know, so, so far he's just a, he's just a common guy. I mean, he's one of those hardworking guys. Even though he's had a tremendous amount of success, uh, you wouldn't tell uh, any difference in him. Uh, real down to earth, can talk to anybody on the team. Um, very unassuming. Um, but he does has to have charisma when he needs to have charisma. Uh, he's got he's got that spark to him and that it factor that you look for in the in the great quarterback. So so far it's been a, it's been a lot of fun. Now he spent probably more time with Coach Dez uh, and the guys on offense and Coach Lamb uh, than myself. And I know Dez is kind of mad at me. He finally uh, came off and said, "Look, dude, I need about two days to talk about the counter. All right, can I at least get a day to talk some football with you?" Uh, but uh, but no, Brennan's been awesome. Uh, graduated, got his degree, got a chance to meet his family. Uh, just very blue collar, um, and you can tell by that's how he plays. He yeah. plays blue collar, hard nose. Uh, just just a fun guy to be around. Yeah. So, coach, you know, knowing that you have such a general I'm not going to say chess piece because it's more than that having a guy like that the leader and and knowing okay this offense was very unique for the last couple of years and in the fact from you know we got quarterbacks wearing 90 pluses out there we have three or four of them on in the field at the same time we've got unique formations motions all this stuff that everybody knows and is ingrained and then we have a new staff coming in is it we're going to marry some of the things that I've done in the past and that my staff has done to this or is it hey that's done. This is who we are. This is what we're doing moving forward without giving away your whole playbook. Yeah, you know, and it's it's an interesting transition because I'm coming from Clemson and and, and you know that uh, we uh, we always try to be very, very sound in what we did on offense. We try to be very, very balanced. We always had an, an answer for anything that we could anticipate. But uh, at the end of the day, we put the ball down and we let the horses go. Right. And so so we have some horses here, but we may not have the depth of horses in which we had at Clemson. And so I'm taking that that experience. And then uh, on on the flip side is you got Coach Kitchens, who was was in an offense where uh, they ran the outside zone, where we were predominantly an inside zone. So you're kind of mixing those two. And I'm getting to experience uh, a little bit more of the of the wide zone type of concepts. And then, you know, Des has a a background of, of of being up under center a little bit more. And so for us this year, uh, we know that, that, that we got uh, some guys returning, but that might not be the case going forward. So for us, you know, we're building the offense that we believe gives us the best chance to be successful, you know, game in and game out. So there's a lot more uh, variety uh, in our in our system. Um, we are committed to being a little bit more balanced uh, than what they've been in the past at the University of Virginia, which will, which will be new to the fans uh, and new to some of the some of the people early on. And uh, we're not going to go out and just say, Brett, and throw it every single play. Now, if that's what it takes to win the game, then we'll be prepared to do that but we want to we want to create uh, a more balanced attack and that doesn't mean it's statistically as balanced but just from a from a mindset standpoint and the ability to uh to run the ball in situations that you need to run the ball and be effective uh that's where uh that's where we're uh, taking that approach and um so so it's going to look at times like what you're used to seeing and then there's going to be some times where it may look a little bit different but that's going to be because now we're leaning on the background that Dez and the other guys in the offensive room uh have this makes sense coming from a former running backs coach, but we also know you're a former wide receiver. And right. some of these dudes you have in this wide receiver room, coach, with Kemp, with Wicks, with Thompson, with Lavelle Davis, who's back. I mean, this may be one of the best units in the country. What, what have you seen from these guys so far? You know, so far that they're as advertised uh, individually. The only one that I didn't get to see uh, was Kemp because he was out during the spring, but just his moxie. And his uh, his charisma he, uh, just lets you know that he's a playmaker. Like he just loses, and he just walks and talks and carries himself uh, like a playmaker. And and even though he may be the the smallest in stature, I tell you what, he's uh, he's the he's the ringleader. You know, he's the guy that sets the emotional uh, standard for the uh, for the room. But Wicks is as good as as I've been around. Uh, he's got unbelievable potential. Lavelle is different. You know, I've never been around a guy that long. Yeah. You know, we've had long ones that I've that I've been, been fortunate enough to be around, but a guy that long with that range and he's got deceptive speed uh then you look at kt kt is just versatile you know he's going to come in probably somewhere between 212 to 220 pounds uh but 
but he can play like a tight end if he needs to. He can run like a wide out. You know, it's been impressive to watch him, you know, really, really take uh, take hold to the strength and conditioning aspect of his game. Uh, you know, being a former quarterback, you know, that was new to him. Uh, but with Coach Schmo and the transition there, he's really, really, really uh, engaged the, uh, the weight room. So it's fun to see his body transition, but then also see him get stronger, get a little bit faster. Uh, then we got a couple young guys, too, that, that I'm excited about. A guy like uh, Demi Starling uh, really showed out uh, this uh, this spring. Very, very fast, electric guy. Uh, then you got Malachi. Uh, Malachi Fields is another one that's a big body. Uh, so the greatest thing that we have is competition, and, and I think that's what uh, what Eric knows is, is is what gives you a chance to be successful. When you got competition, healthy competition uh, at each position, uh, we don't have it at every position, but at that position at wideout, we definitely got the healthy competition. Yeah, it's, it's locked and loaded, Coach. It's one of the more impressive rooms, I think, again, in the country just because of the depth, the experience, and just how different they all are. You know, there's some places you can go, and it's like, okay, there's four or five of these same dudes. Uh well, so- it feels like Virginia, they're all different. I mean, and that's, that's just the case, and can't wait to see it. Uh, now, listen, we're all offensive people, but there is, for some reason, another side of the ball. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about defense a little bit here, Coach. And it's it's a little bit new to you. Uh, again, you being the, the fact that you're over command of it, not the fact that you, you know it. What, what is the Virginia defense going to be? What What is your goal? What is your mindset of when you play this team, this is what you're going to see when we line up? Yeah, first first center around stopping the run. I think to 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 be a good football team, you got to be able to run the football and you got to be able to stop the run. So that's where that's where it starts. And then being sound, uh, being being aggressive, but being under control, uh, being able to get after the quarterback schematically, uh, challenge uh, challenge you schematically to make sure you identify, uh, but at the same time keep it simple for our guys to be able to line up and play fast and. Uh, we're a lot. We look a lot different than we did in the spring. Uh, to Good. be honest with you, we had we had the addition of several guys, uh, especially in the trenches up front, from a grad transfer standpoint, that we feel like is going to give us some quality depth at the uh, at the D line. We already had some good young guys uh, in the system, just needed an opportunity to get some reps. And uh, excited about those guys on the back end. We're getting some guys back from injuries, so you know I'm excited about where this defense is going to be, just from a, a body standpoint. Because uh, we were very, very limited uh, this spring, but uh, but I'm excited about uh, the potential. And then Coach Rudd, Coach Rosinski, uh, in my opinion, is as good as anybody in the country in terms of you know his knowledge and his ability to pick apart an offense, ability to to schematically you know put pressure uh, on a uh, on an offense, force you to execute, and uh, then he has the ability to get exotic if he needs to. So so I'm excited. But the biggest thing for me is I've always you know been on the offensive side about picking it apart. Uh, now I have to do a good job of, of, of figuring out, you know, how to manage the the, the entire team so that uh, offense and defense and special teams are complementing each mm-hmm. other as opposed to focusing on one area, just making sure that we're ready to do our job. Now I have right. to make sure that all three components uh, of the team are ready to perform uh, at a high level and do it uh, while they're complementing each other and nobody's having to compensate from one other uh, one other unit. Coach, I'm sure you realize this, but I was I was watching SEC Media Days and Lane Kiffin was up there and he was being asked about Saban, of course, because he coached for Saban. And I'm sure you've been asked a million times about Coach Sweeney as you've transitioned to UVA. If there's one thing, one thing that you hope that you take away from Coach Sweeney, that you take from him as a coach and use it as a head coach, what is it? Just the impact that, that, that I can make on the players. Uh, I think that uh, obviously, people outside of the Clemson program are going to judge Coach by his wins and losses and championships and all of those things. But those who are really a part of the program, uh, the great, the greatest thing about him is just the relationships that he has with his players and the positive impacts uh, that he has on their lives. Like, I wouldn't be sitting here having this podcast, and nor would, would McLean be on this podcast with me if if it weren't for coaches. Uh, intention, I guess I don't know if this is a word, but being intentional, I was going to say intentionality. I don't know if that's a word or not, but being okay. intentional with fostering, you know, relationships, lasting relationships uh, with his players in a, in a positive way. Thanks to Tony Elliott for giving us some time. I mean, he's got a lot on his plate right now. He has to do so much more as a head coach. He was talking about plane manifests and just things that he's never had to deal with. There's a lot of bureaucracy. Things you don't even think about, KG. I mean, you know, when you you really sit down, you're like, man, 
what all entails being the head of something. Mm -hmm. There are so, and especially today, I mean, maybe 20 years ago, it was a lot less, but today oh, yeah. there's so many things that he's responsible. It's his call. And you know, what I thought was funny, kind of going back to another first year head coach with, with Elko, I was talking with him on these trips, these visits that we're doing. And he was just saying, yeah, you know, it's, it's different because I was thinking, man, it'd be really cool if we could do, I guess we can do it. If yeah. I want to do it, we're going to do it. So it's, it's funny, <laughs> you know, these first year head coaches, the, the things that they're going through and it's a lot more than football. I can promise you that. <laughs> you have so much power. You can, right. it's not like this, but you can wave a magic wand and something <laughs> will happen. That's not true, but kind of, uh, but Mac, I appreciate your thoughts with, with Tony and that insight as a player, because for Virginia fans who might not remember the 2014 Clemson Russell Athletic Bowl when Tony Elliott took over, <laughs> Cole Stout, you know, had really struggled throughout the year. Tony Elliott yeah. puts together a game plan and Clemson beats Oklahoma 40 to six. So he's the MVP. He's, he's going to take what he has and put them in the best position to be successful. And what he has is Brennan Armstrong. Brennan Armstrong <laughs> is that dude. And Tony Elliott knows it. This guy has a cannon of an arm. He's an electric playmaker. Can you keep him healthy? I mean, that's that's the big concern with Brennan. But when you look at Virginia, yeah, they put him in a body cast, wheel him onto the field. Uh, that's always our joke. But when you look at Virginia, what stands out is Brennan. And this wide receiving core, Thompson, Kemp, Wicks, Davis, this is one of the best wide receiver cores in the country, Mac. They're good. They're, they're good. They're really good. And, and I can't <laughs> wait to see. In the podcast there, they're good. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see it. That, that was a Sean Tucker answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, I can't we wait to Sean. see just how, I do love Sean, how they're going to, to use these guys. And, you know, because last year there was just so, in the last couple of years, it was so unique and, and just so different. And, and, you know, speaking of Syracuse, they, they're, you know, OC going to mm -hmm. Syracuse and Coach Anai and the things that he would do with this team offensively, I, I think there will be some sprinkle of that. But at the end of the day, this this is going to be Tony's offense. This is going to be Coach Kitchen's offense. And, you know, I, I think to just see how they use these guys is, is going to be tremendous. And at, at his core, Coach Elliott's a wide receiver. So yeah. he's going to get make them so much better and really help them take another step. All the while having Brennan, a guy who, you know, could have easily – you know, probably been at the 5,000 yards if he would have played in every game and, and did what he was doing. It was incredible, mm -hmm. uh, the, the things that he was doing with his arm, the decisions he was making. So now how much better can he get along with these wide receivers? Um, I, I just can't wait to see it. I'm very excited. Now, when I, when I think of Coach E and I think of the things that he wants to do, at his core, he wants to have balance. He wants to be able to run the football, and that's something we have not seen from Virginia especially at the running back position. Correct. Now, Bryce Perkins did a fantastic job. Brennan did a fantastic job. But they haven't had a a bell cow or really even just a true presence running the football from the running back position. So does that change? Does a guy emerge? Do they force the issue and, and just really make it happen? I have to think having a guy like Brennan for one more year, maybe not, you're going to take full advantage of that skill set and, and that ability um, so we'll, we'll be interesting to see KG, what does this offense look like? Do they throw it 45 plus times a game or do they, do they, are they able to have some sort of balance? I really struggle to see Tony Elliott throwing it 45 plus times a game because he's, well, let me help you because you just said Wicks, Fields, yeah, Kemp, Thompson, Lavelle Davis. I mean, it's. Here's, Use what you got. And that's what he's good at, though. Yes. That's what he's good at. He, he evaluates what he has. We were joking about this during our break, during the Tony Elliott interview. Here's what you're going to see. I think you're going to see some pop passes because yeah. that's something that Tony <laughs> Elliott used a lot with some of these weapons that Clemson had, a guy like Artavis Scott, which can remind you a little bit of a Wicks or a Kemp, where you can just pop him the ball, and that's almost a run play in, in right. many respects because you're getting the ball to your playmakers. So I think he's – this staff is going to be creative, but like you said, getting the ball into the hands of those guys who could make plays right. for you, that's yes. the bottom line. Yeah, and the biggest concern, you know, they're loaded and have great skill players, but they lost every offensive Yes, line. that is, that yeah. They, and man, that's a big kind of deal to, to a big void to try to fill there. And, and they went to the portal and they tried to find some guys. It's going to be really interesting to see what that looks like because, as we all know, man, it starts up front in the trenches and in every aspect of a team. So do they have to get creative with, with 
uh, you know, pass protections? Are they rolling a lot? Are they are they doing max pro? Are they keeping tight ends and running backs in at times because these receivers are so skilled and Brennan is going to be so skilled? I, I can't wait to watch it, honestly, just to see what it what it ultimately is going to look like. Now on the other side, Eric McLean, this defense, <laughs> well, God bless it, um, It's it's got to be better. It, it really can't be yeah. worse. And that's something that I think, you know, just with a new staff, a new scheme, some new life, it should be better. I don't know really what to expect. We've seen this defense in the spring use different fronts, mainly a 5-DB system. So that's going to be interesting. I think that makes sense because – they don't really have the hosses up front that some of the other schools might. Where will the was that hosses or horses? What was that? Both were hosses, <laughs> big old hosses, Mac. You know, um, but this deep. I mean, you have Nick Jackson back, the heart and soul of this defense right. at linebacker. It's yeah. got to be better, I think, or at least look a little better. I would like to see it more balanced because in the past two years, it's either been the worst pass defense or the worst yeah. run defense consecutively. I, I just. Find somewhere in the middle and be like ninth. Don't be right. 14th. Like it's not, it's okay to not be great, but let's see a little bit of improvement there. Will be really interesting. Uh, defensive coordinator coming in from Air Force, a, a guy that was very successful and, and had great schematic approach, you know, to what he wanted his defense to look like. But KG, in that same sense, he was also playing with a defense that the, the offense had the ball. 100 minutes a game like th his defense wasn't out there much and so how much is that going to affect what are we going to see from that um but yeah th there's no question it starts with nick jackson and then i hope that you know it, it can spread through this team and, and have some guys really step up uh and, and just compete yeah. Be playmakers get after it honestly think about it this way defense get us the ball one time get one stop and we can outscore everybody. Mm -hmm. That that would almost be the mentality, you know, that, that I kind of have is is let's do enough, you know, to get these guys either an extra opportunity or a stop, and then let our offense just just pull a lot. Right, of and, and they were minus four in the turnover margin last year, so that's something that that could improve. Let's look at the schedule, Mac. The win total seven and a half. This is one of the few teams I think in the ACC that have to go look, but where their win total is significantly higher than their wins last year. This team went six and six last year, and Vegas has them at yeah. seven and a half. That's interesting. <laughs> and what really stands out to me, Mac, is the final game, the final five games of this schedule. Four at home, which is really good, but you've got Miami, North Carolina, Pitt, Coastal Carolina, at Virginia Tech. That is a tough final stretch, even though you get four of those games at home. Yeah, I, this is – I might be a little bullish on – Virginia, but I, I'm thinking over. I really? really am. I, I think that Brennan is that good of a player. I, I think that when you look at this, it, it's nice who they drew in the crossover in the mm -hmm. ACC. And as you said, it, it just it, it's it's a good schedule. It shapes up well where your toughest games are in late October, November, and it gives you time to, to build, right. to develop, to figure out who you are as a team. So it either could be very good or very bad. I mean, it could be. Uh, you don't win a game past October 20th, or it could be, okay, we're fighting, we're figuring out who Which, we are. Which, by the so way, Mac, when I they look didn't at... win a game past October 20th last year. Whoops. So, Sorry, that guys. happened. I mean, it's, that's the thing. <laughs> and Brennan was hurt. Brennan exactly. was hurt. Brennan was banged up. He got demolished against BYU yeah. and then just wasn't the same guy after that. And so, really, I mean, I, I think the biggest deal, and Virginia fans, you know, correct me on Twitter or whatever if I'm wrong here, November 26th is the biggest, most important day. Oh, Go yeah. beat your rival. Go get it done. You had a much better team than them a year ago, and you couldn't do it. It's just they have this magic spell over Virginia where Virginia Tech can't lose to those guys. And I think that this – it would mean so much to the community, to these players, to everybody, if this staff came in year one and got that – I mean, that's the Super Bowl in my opinion. I know there's other goals and all that other stuff – but that's the game where I look on this schedule, I'm like, get it done mm -hmm. here. Got to get that Agreed. Done. Agreed. I, I don't know if I can lean over with seven and a half. Because, again, it, it worries me. You win six last year and Vegas has you at seven and a half. That, that's a big jump with yeah. the new staff and losing your whole O-line. Brennan is special, but it, this isn't basketball. It's not just one guy 
on the floor <laughs> and you only have four other guys and he can go score 30. There, there's a lot of other yeah. aspects to football. I don't have to tell you this, Mac. You know. So I, I, I think seven and five is very reasonable. But I, I don't know if I can lean over the seven and a half. Well, you know, agree to disagree, guys. Go to the bank, give me all the credit, <laughs> and uh, let's get this done. It, it would be it would be tremendous. I mean, to, to be win eight, honest, if they could get that done, one, yeah, yeah, if yeah, if they could figure that out or more. I mean, I, I we can play win game sometime and just kind of see here what we think is going to happen. But man, it, it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be something. So big shout out to Jim helping us get this episode rolling. Coach E was fantastic as always. Excited. Very excited for him to, to get rolling. Obviously, near and dear to our hearts, being a Clemson guy there. But, uh, guys, that's it. Thanks for listening. Another great episode of Gramlick and Mac Lane. Go to SiriusXM. Subscribe. Get an account. We can follow you in your car, on your phone, wherever you want to go. But also go over to mm-hmm. YouTube. Go over to Apple Podcasts. Subscribe, rate, review. Always fun hearing from you guys. But until next time, we'll see you all. 